Hello and welcome to this video where I explain how a computer works. So I'm rightfully wearing a UCL mechanical engineering t-shirt, which I obviously haven't ironed. But anyway, how does a computer work? So welcome to this new style of video where I teach. In this series of videos, I sit down and teach you things off the back of my head about important things that I think that you should all know how it works, which I think you should all know how it works. And today we're gonna to be talking about computers. So, I mean, everyone has a computer in their life and computers are so important. Even though this is a channel where I give life advice and talk about my PhD, I think technology is the thing that has changed everything the most and therefore technology is integral. It is built, it is the foundation of everything that we do that is important. So having tech phobia or not knowing how tech works, it really is detrimental towards your life. And it really pains me to know that most people don't actually know what a computer is or how a computer works. And this is not good enough anymore. So we're gonna be talking about what a computer is. So let's just start off what a computer is in general. Computer is something that computes, so therefore calculate. In the early days, the first computer was actually just a calculator, which did simple arithmetic, simple math, five at five or 5,000 times 6,021, which is still simple math because it's something that has to be calculated. And therefore what you might think, why do I, I don't need a calculator, like, my phone has one, but you'd be surprised. But your phone is definitely a computer. Everything you use that has technology or electronics inside pretty much has a calculator, such as your television, your mobile phone, your camera, your microphone, pretty much everything, your laptop is a computer. So therefore a computer computes things and calculates things in order to have an output. And that output is usually what you see on a display. Therefore your laptop has a display, your computer monitor is a display. So let's just, get into what a computer is. So the first thing that's the most important about a computer is the CPU, which is the central processing unit. On a big computer, so we're talking about big computers that you have on your desktop, it would be a chip either made by AMD or Intel. And this chip is what they call the CPU and this performs the calculations. I'm not gonna get into any technical detail, but it performs calculations and the more times it does it, it's measured in Hertz. So you might hear, your new computer is 3.6 gigahertz or 3.7 gigahertz or anything like that gigahertz, which means giga means a thousand and hertz means the frequency of how many times it does it. So basically the more gigahertz you have, the faster your CPUs. However, you cannot compare CPUs from different manufacturers. You can't compare CPUs from different years. Just because you have a five gigahertz CPU from 2011, there's no way it will be actual faster than a four gigahertz CPU that is produced today. But anyway, the CPU performs all the calculations and this CPU needs to communicate with all the other components and these components are a very important part of a computer. So the CPU is placed on a motherboard and a motherboard is basically a chip, a board, a plastic board with lots of metal stuff on it that connects the CPU to the other components. So the other components that are important, which are very important in a computer, is the memory. So I know people get this mixed up all the time, the difference between memory and storage. So they say, my computer has 500 gigabytes memory. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, really, it does? How much did you pay for it? And they're like, oh, only 500 pounds. No way, 500 gigabytes of RAM is extremely expensive. It will cost you thousands and thousands of pounds. So there's a difference between memory and storage. So the memory, just like us, is what is kept temporarily. So when you open a tab on Chrome or when you open an application, this is given to the memory. So if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is 16 gigabytes of memory, you can open about 16 gigabytes worth of stuff temporarily. When your computer switches off, that is actually wiped out. I know like with the new operating systems like Mac, and Windows, it allows you to restore your tabs, but this is because it stores it onto the hard drive. And so the hard drive is another very, very important part. The hard drive is basically permanent storage. So if you have photos saved onto your computer, saved onto your computer, it means that it's put into your storage. Now, usually storage would be around 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, or maybe one terabyte, which is a lot these days. That's what the storage is. So if you hear something like a crazy amount of gigabytes, it's usually storage. Storage is where the applications are stored, where the photos are stored, where the movies are stored, but this is different from RAM, because RAM is temporary. So like an application is open, so the computer knows just like our memory, like our short-term memory, we like throughout the day, we can remember what day it was, what we did in the morning, what we did in the night. But if we wanted to access this memory, maybe two years down the line, we'd completely forget because it's not very important to us. There's a difference between memory and storage. Storage is like a, a box where like you're when you're moving, but those things are physically there all the time. The other very important part of a computer is actually the display. The CPU performs the calculations and the computer has memory, the computer has storage, but then 
then the computer has to output all of that data, so all the calculations in terms of graphs, which you see as graphics, so like anything that you see on screen, the computer has to display that out to a display. So usually there will be a CPU, which is a central processing unit, and also a GPU, which is a graphics processing unit. And this essentially turns all the calculations into things that we can see. It's very, very complicated things. Whoever built computers and software are complete geniuses, but essentially everything that we see are just calculations or things. All the programs and all the algorithms are just different calculations, a different formula, and they actually turn out in the CPU to actually produce graphics, which we can actually see and interact with. So everything on Facebook, everything on YouTube, Instagram, everything, it's just all graphics produced by calculations, produced by very smart people and their software. So the graphics processing unit takes all this magic from the CPU and produces it into things we can see. You might have heard of Nvidia and AMD, which are huge graphics card manufacturers, and they produce graphics cards that you can actually play games on. However, you don't need to play games. Not everyone plays games, and even if you don't want to play games, you still need a GPU. So usually what you will see in a normal laptop is a small GPU which does all the processing. So you can watch your Netflix, you can watch your YouTube, you can watch all these other things which is connected to a display. So like our phones, our laptops, they have connected displays already. So everything is done in one place. So the CPU and the RAM, the memory, the storage, everything does all these bits and it actually outputs to a display that we can actually see, interact. And with our iPhones and phones, we can actually touch the screen. So that's even more complicated, but essentially the display is what we interact with. On a desktop computer, you have the actual tower, which is connected to either a TV or a monitor, and then you have a keyboard and a mouse, and this is your input. Whatever you type into your keyboard and mouse, there are inputs, which is put into the CPU. The CPU does its magic and then outputs it to the GPU. So that is essentially how a computer works. Knowing the various different components is very important because if something fails, most of the time it's very easy to replace. Instead of actually wasting time or money going to someone who is an expert, most of the times things fail and you can actually diagnose it yourself if you knew each component and what they did. But anyway, this video was just a small introduction on how computers work. And I really do wish it helped kind of fathom how computers work, what a CPU is in a very, very, very basic term, by the way. So if you, I'm sure some, so many of you know more about computers and laptops and so forth and so forth in more detail, but I thought this video will just introduce you guys into the world of tech, how computers work and the kind of difference between storage and memory. So if you like this video, please show me your appreciation by giving me a thumbs up, comment down below and tell me if you found this video more confusing or if it actually helped. And as always, thank you for watching.